Hi everybody! I've got a 15 minute follow up session that I'm doing for a client. The previous session it was a 60 minute soul rebirth journey and it was really really interesting. If you're interested in watching it, I'm not going to tell you too much, you should just watch it. It's called the Soul Ascension Journey and I'll put a link to it in the description. So this session we're going to be taking a look at the sacral chakra and third eye. Um, the goals are simply how are the sacral chakra and third eye doing since the soul journey session. So okay. Just give me a moment here. I'm just absorbing the energy in. Okay, this is it. I can't wait to see what we find out. Okay. I'm going to go into your third eye first here. It's almost like I'm seeing an image of you um, and it's, it's like I get a choice. I can go to the sacral chakra or I could go to the third eye. Usually I just go into a space and whatever it, it means, it's, it's about both, one or the other, however it wants to express itself. But here it's like it's giving me a choice and I experience a, a white slide. And I'm kind of on this white slide coming from above and I'm going wee and I'm just going into your third eye right now. You're still, that. there's like a shut door here. And then I see a barren tumbleweed going by. What is holding you back? There's, it's almost like a, a resistance that uh, you're processing. All right, there's gold, there's a golden. Um, so let's just say there's a rounded door here that's closed, but I can see there's like golden leaf, <laughs> just a, a coating or something that I can see on the outer rim of the door. It's really catching my eye. But on the other side, it's it's almost like it hasn't come full circle yet. It's still in a state of exploration contemplation of what was experienced in that session which is great this is a really good reason for me to come and and help to bring everything into a harmonious balance because it takes time to process that kind of energy work so I'm just knocking on your third eye door it's a really pretty white door there's a, what appears to be a window, but it's it's just sort of a carved into the wood. And there's a kind of a gnome-like feel to it, as though there would be sort of green greenery just growing around. There's a pause on the other side. I start to notice the door is developing a golden handle and a, like a keyhole. And I see a version of yourself coming forward and you look like Alice in Wonderland and you do have a key. You can't decide what color dress you're wearing. It, it sort of goes from white with a sort of black around the neck, just this little bow, to blue with this little black um, bow around the neck. And you have blonde hair. This golden key is just perfect. It's like the perfect key. It's huge as well. It's it's not small. It's like a big key going in. It's really exciting, actually. And it's made out of pure gold. It's cool. She's having trouble with the lock. So she's unlocking it, but it's almost like the key is stuck or the door is jammed. And now I see Alice is growing taller and bigger and... It's just way out of proportion. She's, uh, she's just standing here kind of perplexed. 
she's not making a decision. She's just standing here perplexed. This whole time I've been thinking, well, I can just project my consciousness into this area. Because you really don't want to open this door yet. You're just not sure about it. And then you send this part of yourself to unlock it and open it, but not even you can open the third eye of yourself. But that's part of the riddle, right? Because you're the one that locked it in the first place. So I can't think of anybody better to open their third eye than you, right? <laughs> also, it's always good to say that my third eye is open. Always just say your third eye is open. It's a really good place to start. Instead of saying something like my third eye is blocked or my third eye is shut. or It's always open. Always. You're still reminiscing on aspects of that journey. You're still coming f full circle with it. You're still having some inner decisions. I can hear the sound of deep processing and contemplation. But there is change going on here. There is movement. It's like... It's like the silence before the storm, but it's a really good storm. Like, it's the type of rain you want. <laughs> the type of rain clouds and everything. You want this. So there's just this uh, processing going on before a big change. Why am I still standing outside of this door? I'm literally asking your higher self and guides and everybody. Why can't I just go in? Why is there this... Uh, resistance. Why is Alice in Wonderland here standing so big and tall, perplexed, not sure how to open this up? For some reason, I'm not allowed to go in, so I, I can't. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go check out your sacral chakra, and I'll just leave that. All this stuff is going on here, and I'm just going to go check out your sacral chakra. <sighs> See what it's like in there. And now I'm on a slide that is going from your third eye, and it's kind of a fun little curvy slide, and then I'm just going into that area. And the slide is a pink and purple mixture. It's like a, some of it's pink, some of it's purple, some of it's like a pink and purplish. It's really pretty. So I see it, it's, I'm coming into what, it's a lot of um, black squishiness, squishy stuff. And there's this bah humbug part of you in here. But it's easy to get in here. There's no locked doors or anything. She's kind of small and crouched and like, <clears throat> <laughs> like kind of just angry about something. And I just give her a hug because that's the one thing she really needs. She shows me images of butterflies and the butterflies are sort of flying free towards the light of the sun. And she can't become one of these. That's kind of what she's, her energy is expressing here. I'll never be like that. I'll always be like this. I'm transforming this black squish into tranquil water and I'm just letting that water flow. And for some reason, I'm having her stand in the flow of this water and it's washing the dirt off of her feet. And now it's, it's washing more than that because the water's getting deeper, so it's sort of washing her legs and this dress she's wearing. She's old, like 80 years old. And she's starting to see that somebody cares about her that the water is flowing in and it's helping her to feel cleaner. And she doesn't have to do all this cleanup work, um, but the work is sort of like this blessing is coming to her to help her to clean her. She wants to feel clean.
I got to sit with this for a minute. I'm just continuing to let the water just flow in and circulate around her. And just, and it's almost not, it's not just washing the outside, it's purifying the way that she feels inside of herself. She's not dirty on the outside or the inside. And she's not living in a black squishy place. It's um, turning into a Garden of Eden, okay? Which is interesting because as this is shifting in the sacral, um, it's giving safety and security to the third eye. I'm just going to continue to let this all flow. I mean, this is really heavenly to feel. It's almost like... It's like 20 years of a really hard life sentence just in life experiences and memories suddenly shifts in a single moment, in a single day, and you're free. You're free. That's how beautiful this feels. That's how... It's like the heart just wants to tear up and just let the tears wash away the pain of the sacral as well. And the tears are just absolutely heavenly beautiful. Even the emotional gut, the solar plexus, wants to shed the tears of pure love. And just support and kindness, caring, soul energy, heaven energy to sacral. Just to continue to nurture her. Help her to feel clean. Where she doesn't have to just keep trying this all by herself. There's support. You're going through a change in this energy space because there's a release of a lot of old energy and that could very well be everything we saw in that previous session was a very long story about it's like the energy story of your soul and all that black gooey um, all the fear and the, the, the very long walk all that stuff and just balling up um, and being birthed out the sacral Because we can let all that go. We can let it all go. And the third eye needs this in order to feel ready for its calling and its purpose to open up. This is a really good um, follow-up session. It's just very good to get um, all that movement, all that change. Um, to have a chance to kind of go in and take a look at, at where everything is shifted and just help that shift and just help get some of that stuff out and bring it all into balance with itself, okay? So this is really good. It's a, it's a bit of a painful birth, but it happens instantaneously. It looks like a big black marble was just born. It was pretty gooey and sticky looking and then it just birthed out and it looks like a big black marble. And this birthing process is taking place inside the sacral chakra, okay? So it's like this big, but to us in here it's like a big black marble. <laughs> hmm. And she's panting and heaving because it was just, it took all of her strength to let that loose to get that out of there. She feels uh, a transformation and I start to see she's old already. She's like 80 years old. She's starting to kind of um, wither away and disappear. And I see her sort of spirit being sent back to heaven. Okay. And she doesn't have to carry that pain anymore. She is, she's finalized her purpose or her process. She released that energy and now she is set free, transformed and set free. I see her sacral is totally buzzing with different energies. Uh, I mean, it's a newness. It's like a brand, it's like the first ever Garden of Eden that ever happened. That's how fresh and brand new it feels in here. And there's just butterflies and flowers and greenery everywhere. 
there's beautiful areas of shade and beautiful areas of sunlight. Um, we're not afraid of clouds and rain and rainbows, right? So we just let the natural processes take place and bumblebees and the beautiful animals of the forest are here all in your sacral chakra. And as we continue to really develop the light inside of here, let's see what third eye is up to now. There's something strange here that's coming out the door. It's like two little wooden men and they both have uh, wooden carved like baby bottles. It's it's like it's almost like a weird like wood a, like a wooden clock where it at, a, the, at the hour it opens up the door and then there's a, like a little little scene that plays and it goes around and around and you have little wooden people doing different movements but they're actually walking out and they're twins and they both have what is like a wooden bottle a baby bottle that's a big deal there these two are starting to kind of disappear it looks kind of black and, and gloomy inside of here, so I'm just walking in right now. Really weird. It's a, a caramely, dark purple, black, and caramel colored energy. I can collect it in a net, but it's sticky as well. And there's tears that are being shed here. I'm going in really deep and there feels like several very old men that are, I guess, leaders. Uh, they, they're kind of dressed in white togas, they have white hair, and they feel like leaders, guides, but they're not, they're part of your inner consciousness, they're not like your spirit guides. There's something out of balance. There seems to, it's like, there's several of them and it feels like there's two closest to me and two chairs and then one behind them in a bigger throne. And the two closest to me are twins and the one behind them doesn't look like them. They're a bit angry as well about something. And I, I just touch all of their hearts at once and I tell them it's safe to relax. Don't feel like you need to be on the edge. Don't worry, don't feel nervous. They feel like their time is complete and they need to move on and that's one thing they've been resisting just like that woman needed to move on as well. These are just inner parts of your collective identity, okay? It just, just give it some time here that it's still processing. It's almost like they're saying proper goodbyes or they're preparing themselves for this change. All the while this giant Alice in Wonderland is still standing outside. She's choosing a white dress and she's getting smaller and she's entering into the doorway. She knows these men. She's starting to turn into a cat, black and white cat. She's quickly running over to them and purring and sort of jumping on this one's lap, but it's like she's jumping on all their laps and purring. And it's, it's sort of a message like, it's time for you to be yourself. And It's interesting because they're talking to me about identity. And if you look at the story of Alice in Wonderland, 
what what is it about that story and the development of Alice's own identity through this very unusual experience, right? How do you know what your identity is? But your Alice in Wonderland story, your personal story, um, it's like, it's again another riddle here, but I, I, all I can say is that you're going to know what I mean. Because, because you're embracing a role that is, it's the totality of the story itself, of the persona of Alice, who is a leader herself, coming um, into her own and making decisions. And now um, having um, power over her own third eye because she can make decisions. She glows very bright. And she removes the door. Because there's no reason to have a door there. Alright, that's all I have to share. Thank you so much. This was really cool. <sighs> Alright. <laughs> Just coming back to my senses here. That was a really awesome experience. Thank you so much for sharing and for giving me the opportunity to work with you. And uh, for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, thank you all and have a beautiful day.